3.52 remaining here at TD Arena. The College of Charleston trailing James Madison by 16. It was just a seven point deficit at the halftime, but James Madison came out shooting lights out here in the second half. And, and like I talked about before we went into that media timeout, bench points for College of Charleston has only been four of the 50, but on the opposite side for the Dukes, Perez and Barron both contributing 16 points total for of the 69. And Precious Hall now back in. She does have four fouls, but hits the tray, and she now has 20 points. Just below her season average, she came into today's contest averaging 21.2. Mickens directing the offense. She'll work it around to Guafmi. A smile from Guafmi, and I think if you're a James Madison fan, <laughs> you have just about every right to smile in this game. It's been a disappointing one for the College of Charleston, but we've certainly seen some flashes of brilliance. Absolutely, that was a great look by Clay Brown to Bree Bolden, and College of Charleston really does their best when they can run the fast break, when they can run their own pace. That's been the trouble, though, in the second half. It's really been the Dukes that have been making the pace of this game. They haven't been getting the steals and running the fast break like College of Charleston is used to doing. James Madison has just been so good this season of taking teams out of their game, and you've seen it against the college here today. What appeared to be a, a pretty tight game at the half. James Madison made some halftime adjustments, and they've come up big here in the second. So Micken's going to slow the game down now. 239 and counting remaining. The College of Charleston trailing 69-50. Haley Barron, the freshman, getting some playing time. She has been a solid contributor for the Dukes as well. And she has the ball on the outside. The three-point attempt is up, no good. And now a shot clock violation as that one just missed the rim, and Precious Hall not able to get it back up in time. The Perez back in. As Hall is probably going to take her final seat. It was an exciting one in the first half, but James Madison just began to flex their muscle and show you why they are so dominant here in CAA play. And this team just has two losses on the season. We mentioned it earlier to number 10 Maryland, or who was number 10 at the time, and Vanderbilt. They're going to make another push for the Colonial Athletic Association crown and try to get back to the NCAA tournament. The craziest thing about this is Kenny Brooks, their head coach, we mentioned his success earlier coming into today's game with a 72% winning percentage. He's only had one losing season in his entire career at James Madison. This is his 13th year. That's absolutely crazy. I mean, he's definitely take this program just to another level. Kenny Brooks was a three-year player at James Madison on their men's basketball team, and I'm sure he's happy to be home in Harrisonburg. Cougars so. applying the pressure here as we get down into the last two minutes. Nice job there by Jones to get the ball over to Mickens and get out of pressure. Mickens kind of went down to the basket, realized, hey, let's run this clock a little bit before I take a shot and did exactly that. And makes the shot, so it's 71-50 now. So it appears there will be no second straight upset for the College of Charleston today. They were James Madison's lone conference loss last season. We were talking to their SID earlier, and she said that was definitely weighing on the players' minds coming into today's game. Nice move there by Luna Castro, but not gonna be enough for the College of Charleston as we hit the one minute mark. James Madison will win their eighth straight game. They're nine and one in their last 10 coming into today's contest. They're only lost on the road. That one coming to Vanderbilt earlier this year. And then the neutral site loss to Maryland. Great and trap right there. Gives Perez the option to go ahead and steal that pass. Layup off at a foul call.
when you have a good trap like that in a press, you want to make sure that you're pushing that ball as fast before you get put into those types of situations. Always look ahead to the floor, to the opposite guard, and try and get out of those situations. Perez makes the first, and we'll see some substitutions for the college. It'll be Davis Bloom and Shanique Hurd coming in for the Cougars. And a little interesting tidbit about Hurd, I'd like to plug this. She actually graduated from my high school. A few years later, of course, but <laughs> Riverdale High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I'm a 2008 graduate. It's always nice to see some Tennesseans here in Charleston. And another foul at the other end of the floor. Courtney Gardner is going to have the chance to get her first points of the game. And she makes the first. Gardner has come in and played a lot this season. She's done a good job. She's definitely progressed. Worked hard, just an absolute hard worker. And we see Zoe Wallace getting some playing time here in the latter stages as she replaces Luna Castro. Heard quick at the guard position, tries to get it inside, and Gardner's going to draw another foul. Always like to see this. You're down by 20, but still playing with a lot of effort here as they try to close this game out. Absolutely, and these are just learning tools that you can use and take to the next game. Kind of look back at the game film, see, you know, the first half was great. What w went wrong in the second half? What was the reason why we couldn't come back and stay in this ball game? But a chance right here to get some underclassmen, some playing time. Heard just a freshman. You also have Zoe Wallace, who's just a freshman. And then Courtney Gardner, who's a sophomore. But Mickens here gonna be able to run out the clock. And that'll be all she wrote here from TD Arena. 73-53 the final. Not exactly what the College of Charleston had in mind, but the Cougars still played well up until the final buzzer. And I would certainly think a decent bit to be able to build on. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just take a look back, see what the goods were, what the bads were. The Cougars definitely are going to have to look for their defense to step up a little bit. They did such a good job of keeping the Dukes at bay in the first half, coming to the second half. Just a ton of wide open shots. We talked about the down low, Mickens, the hull. You know, those were some big threats. So the College of Charleston looking to take those and bring them into their next matchup. While it wasn't the storybook ending that the College of Charleston was hoping for, we would like to thank you for joining us here on the Charleston Sports Network today. 73-53 the final. James Madison improves to 8-0 in the conference, 17-2 overall. For Kelly Kolich, I am Jonathan Barden. We are saying so long. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you next time.